The SANS Institute, the most trusted source for computer security training, certification, and research. Visit SANS.org to explore the full curriculum and latest training offerings. Looking for a career change? Tenable Network Security is hiring. Everything from programmers to researchers. Check out all of the available positions at securityweekly.com forward slash tenable jobs. Onapsis, the leading provider of solutions to protect ERP systems from cyber attacks. Customers can secure their SAP and Oracle business critical platforms from espionage, sabotage, and financial fraud risks. Visit them on the web at onapsis.com. Pony Express. Check out their line of penetration testing devices, including the Pone Pad, the Pone Phone, and the Pone Pro. For enterprises, there's Pone Pulse, providing continuous visibility into wired, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth spectrums across all physical locations, including remote sites and branch offices. For all those hard-to-reach places, there's Pony Express. Visit them on the web at PonyExpress.com. <clears throat> Welcome back, everyone, to... Security Weekly, this is the security news for this week. Wow, you had no idea what you were doing just then, did you? Uh, I, I, I was going to jingle. I was, jing- I don't know what I was. You're what? Gonna, you're gonna, what is that? What is what? What is What's that? Gosh, oh, God. <laughs> it's, it's, a- it's in the Matrix, dude. <clears throat> cyber, wow. cyber, 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 <laughs> cyber terrorists, they win. Well then, uh, what are we talking about for stories? I don't know. What are we talking about? Uh, hackers claim a million dollar bounty for an iOS zero day attack. Oh, yeah. What's the story on this, guys? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I heard that uh, hackers claimed a million dollar bounty. Actually, Chris, Chris was telling me um, before the show that it, this wasn't going to Apple. This was, uh, they were going to sell it to someone else. Yeah. Not Apple. I'd believe it. Yeah. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, there wasn't really anything like new. Like all the stories this week seemed to be like the same stuff. Like there's bug bounties. Some people got breached by SQL injection. Um, there was probably WordPress vulnerabilities. If there wasn't a zero Adobe Zero Day this week, there'll be one next week. You know the the. I think there's a WordPress vulnerability every week now. Pretty much. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, so yeah, I mean it was pretty much the same. Oh, Library of Congress says it's okay to hack your car, Larry. Did you see this article? I did not, and that's awesome. We love why, these guys. My question was, why is the <laughs> Library <coughs> Library of Congress? Oh, the really? Library of Congress is, is that right? Was that live, Nick, or just in my headset? Okay. Just so Nick said <coughs> that. Go ahead. Library of Congress is the only one by law. That is allowed to make uh, exceptions to the DMCA. Hmm. That's weird. How about that? They I mean, that's, that's <clears throat> copyright law exemptions that will allow you to modify the software on your car for purposes of security research, maintenance, or repair. So, open season on hacking your car. Uh, the catch oh, is, like- though, Joff, that exemptions don't take effect for another year. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> And then they had to be renewed every three years. Uh, I knew there was a catch. There's always a catch. <laughs> uh, I, I think we should be able to pen test our cars. I think we should be able to tinker with our cars for security research to make it go faster for maintenance. Look, look, I mean, it's I your car. Bet- why Why can't I plug into the it, OBD2 it, port? Exactly. And Paul, 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 I got so, like, why are we even having this debate? I've got a vested interest in hacking my car, and it's called my family. I want to know where it breaks. Seriously. Yep. Well, you drive a minivan so, still, Joff? No, hell no. I'm done with that. Okay, good. <laughs> but I bet you do. No, I don't, actually. A- <laughs> Acura MDX, baby. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah. I like my car. I, yeah. uh, nope, you know, no minivan it, here. Nope, it, no look, minivan for you either. Look, you Jeep, got a, what Jeep truck and a CRV. Yep, there you go. Look, it I comes have a down. Mini Cooper, too. And I, I bought it. I bought it. it. I the hacking I need to do for that is it needs a new clutch. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> really Oops. St- really stinks. <clears throat> hey, I got to go. I got to visit uh, Casa Pesci uh, uh, last last week or two. When, yeah. uh, and you made it out alive. Yeah, it was it was fantastic. I, it was it was great to see Larry's family and spend time. And um, I've been meaning to do it for a long time. So yeah, we we're was, glad we we're glad you could make it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, on the car topic though, yeah, 
I bought it. Why shouldn't I be able to hack it? I it's mean, like, it's like my Wi-Fi router. I bought it. Why shouldn't I be able to hack it? Precisely. Right. And, and <clears throat> wait, wait a minute. You probably paid a whole lot more money for your car than you did your Wi-Fi router. It depends on like the car. 20 times. <laughs> it depends on the Wi-Fi router. <laughs> <laughs> yep. In general, well, though, a lot true. of the new Wi-Fi routers that I've seen, they're like three hundred bucks, dude. No, I mean we remember we did the book. I mean we were buying W two fifty four Gs like thir- between thirty and a hundred dollars. Yeah, like depending. dirt cheap, dude. Yep. Now they're all fancy schmancy technology. Well, uh, the sad hey, so- part is I'm still getting Lynx's WRT fifty four Gs at like Salvation Army now. But yeah, yeah. I mean, the like, technology so, like is dated. Bucks. I mean, there's a lot more horsepower. in the. Well, Definitely. you know what it is? It's interesting. The horsepower had to increase in the wireless riders because they're doing so much more. Yep. And the yep. wireless cards are so much faster that they have mm-hmm. to put faster mm-hmm. chips in them to keep up with the, yep. the throughput. But speeds. you know what? I pick all those up to build mesh networks out of. Yeah. In fact, I have two installed in the back of the Jeep. Really? Yeah. Interesting. And one in the house. Nice. And a bunch in the EMP cabinet. I mean... Uh, <laughs> 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 that's that's like, cool. it was it was fun to visit visit Larry uh, visit with Larry and uh his his family which are completely awesome but um the uh what I was going to say is uh that sort of adds fuel to the argument uh Paul that um it's no longer acceptable to have a, a cheap and malfunctioning uh nat nat router uh you, you know we need one that's functional uh, especially when you start to get in the three four hundred dollar space, where the um, device is well and truly capable of running some ad- advanced software. Yeah, it, it definitely heightens the security concerns uh, even more, right? Because when I mean, you so you break into someone's W two fifty four G, you're kind of limited by resources what you can do with it. But some of these newer ones now have so much computing horsepower in them that you're not limited by that stuff anymore. So it's it's very interesting. Another interesting story that I found. <clears throat> Not interesting enough to pause, but <laughs> this is it was a dramatic pause. Uh, <laughs> surveying roughly six thousand companies—that's not a whole lot of companies in the U.S. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's a sampling; it's not a very big sampling. Um, these are all companies that use mobile iron software. Okay, so this is where the data came from. The most often blocked or blacklisted apps on people's phones, because mobile iron lets you blacklist mm-hmm. apps mm-hmm. on people's phones. Uh, take a guess at the top one. Flashlight. You're staring at it on my screen. Yeah. It's Flashlight. Flashlight apps should be on the list. And you know what? But they're not. And I'm surprised at number two because I thought that game was totally passe now. Yeah. Yeah, it's so like six so months ago. Yeah. <laughs> Angry Birds. Angry Birds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, when was the last time you played Angry Birds? <laughs> when I was angry. Oh, the uh, movie's coming out. Uh, actually, there's the, an Angry Birds I, I, movie. I could tell you exactly when I played Angry Birds last. It was last m- last Monday on the plane because <laughs> I hadn't played all the other games so much. I'm like, I'm bored. I'm, oh, I haven't played uh, Angry uh, Birds in forever. <laughs> the number one <laughs> app is Dropbox. Dropbox, really? <laughs> Companies hate Dropbox, according to this survey. Uh, pure data leakage, right? Data leakage. Data yeah. leakage. Um, Facebook yeah. is another one that they hate. I don't know well, why. That goes well, under the. Well, I, I think guess it goes so. under the same category. Yeah, uh, data leakage, data leakage. Yeah. Well, yeah, and then there's OneDrive, Google Drive, Box. What is Box? Box.com. But yeah, it's like a leakage. Dropbox. Like a Dropbox thing. thing. Okay, yeah. what's <laughs> what's app? I don't know what I don't even know what WhatsApp is. Dude, you are so old. Messaging, so it's messaging it's like, app. Hey, Paul. Hey, you're getting old, Paul. Old. Hey, Twitter <laughs> and Skype. I know what Twitter and Skype are. Yep. <clears throat> and Sugar Sync. That sounds like another file sharing thing. If I had to guess. Or oh, women sharing thing. Yep. Or a sugar dad. It's not sugar daddy sharing. It's sugar <laughs> daddy sync. Sugar daddy sync. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, automatically synchronizing backup files. So. I don't know what was so interesting about that story, but it was a fun conversation to see if, how many apps on there that I didn't recognize. And now oh, my you bad. can it all shows... make fun of me on the internet now. No, no, Paul. We're going to make fun of you right here. I'm not going to make fun of you much. It does uh, illustrate very clearly the tension between commercial cloud shadow IT versus yes. the uh, you know sanctioned IT of of organizational uh, efforts 
And it's a big, big issue uh, because the shadow IT thing is becoming very, very attractive for so many consumers. And uh, all those consumers are employees of some organization or other. So, yeah. Right. Well, so, it's yeah. pretty clear, Joff, that there's no good corporate controlled application that lets people share files because mm-hmm. of a lot of the, the things that were on that list, right? So, obviously, it's very easy to install Dropbox. I mean, we use Dropbox to share files that are ultimately already yep. public anyway. But, right. But still. Um, but still, we use Dropbox. And I think if the non educated user is using Dropbox, they're going to drop shit in there that shouldn't be in there. Yep. But they're using it because it's there's no equivalent of Dropbox for everyone else. Look, look my, my assertion is that it, it puts an incredibly huge emphasis uh, for the chief information security officers out there to really up that game in terms of user education because there's so many more offerings out there that are so much more attractive um, that it's just putting pressure on them to get the word out of what that means from a business risk perspective for the organizations they work with them. And, and most of the, you know, the regular user population, they just don't think twice about it. They need to be educated about it. They need to be talked about it uh, too actively to understand <clears throat> wh- what those risks really mean. And uh, that, that's, a, that's a big pressure. I mean, I really feel for a lot of our friends in these large organizations that, that we work with because it's a, uh, yeah, nice, Paul. Very nice. That wasn't it's me. That very was Larry. <laughs> Oh, I have, Larry. I have oh, class, Josh. Well, I, okay? I couldn't see you guys for a moment there because all I could see was me. You know. Wow. But, uh, M- me, me, and more of me. Yeah. Um, Kevin Spacey is all about cybersecurity. Did you guys see this? He's. <laughs> what do you? <laughs> Nothing. Dude, the funniest thing in this article is they say Spacey is also in films including K-Pax, American Beauty. In which a plastic bag wait, is the wait, star. Which Kevin is this? And Kevin L.A. Spice Confidential, Sex? which, in which he is most excellent. They say American Beauty is all about a plastic bag. Ah. Oh. <laughs> which I thought oh. American Beauty was a good movie. Oh. I thought oh, the scene where he's driving up <laughs> <coughs> to the drive-through burger joint and he's high and he's yep. ordering burgers and blasting classic rock. I thought that was. Uh, yeah, so that's that's. I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> this week <laughs> I've never done that this week This week This week Today <laughs> That's how Joff celebrates every successful pen test He's He gets yeah, like, he goes to the drive through burger joint Blasting classic burgers. rock and, I can and did picture you, that did you know what In your minivan Only in your minivan can I picture No I don't that. have a minivan But bl- blasting Zed Leplin <laughs> <laughs> Did you did you notice that the um the name of the company that uh, he's going to be uh, heading in the TV show? It's Wise Key. Yeah. Or if you bastardize it, it's Whiskey. Whiskey. Yeah. Maybe this <laughs> article like, is completely like. fake. Was this from the <laughs> Onion? Oh, I was gonna say, is this at the Onion? No, it's at no, the Inquirer. The Inquirer. Similar kind of thing. Whiskey. It is not about a plastic bag. They it's about getting high and going to get burgers. That's what I thought it was about. Uh, our our producers say it's about a plastic bag because yeah. they can't hear. But um, uh, you know, I think really Paul's full of shit. Uh, I mean, that's uh, well. Well, that's wait. just dude. That's just par for the course around here. I'm <laughs> full of shit. Oh, you should do. You should try some medicine. People yourself. have been listening to the show for ten years. If they haven't figured that out by now, you're not really listening, okay? Yeah, but but we love you for staying because I'm, I'm sort of a new guy. Wait, so the, what I, you're saying that, is people only listen now because you're on the show. That's what it is. That's <laughs> glad we cleared that up. <laughs> okay, now hey, we've got clarity. What is that? Um, I was it was bothering me, Joff. I'm glad that we clarified. What is the picture of Larry? Is that you on the news, dude? You were on the news recently. Yeah, is that Larry that's was on the, from oh, CBS Sunday that. morning? Is that it? Sunday is that it? Re- joke in our, our oh, we actually have the video. Screen. There's oh. there's no secure system. The only secure one is. Uh, oh, you sound so professional and buried under six feet of concrete. Wow. Larry Pesci should know. He's a cybersecurity <laughs> consultant who gets paid to find glitches in business. What are you typing there? LS. <laughs> You're yes. typing LS. 
<laughs> LS. Oh, hey, what files are cat.ssh config? <laughs> of me doing testing uh, full time. Um, there has Larry, been a customer that we awesome. went to that we've oh, not That's covered. hilarious, too. At 528 Tuesday evening. What is this, some other clip from something else? No. An estimated 30 million people in the northeastern United States were plunged into an eerie blackness. Wide scale outages are nothing new. <laughs> oh, you were talking about uh, power uh, so, yeah, so, uh, so uh, in the Ted Koppel wrote a book. More than 30 um, million called, without power um, for almost 13 uh, hours. God, the name New Yorkers have the taken it in stride. They'll probably bring it here in one second. Um, but it was basically about, uh, it's like a, a disaster book. The power grid goes dark. It's attacked by cyber. New York City was plunged into darkness again. by cyber. Again. And this time then cyber what, how do people survive after? Crimes. Type of thing. There have been massive power uh, outages, and they basically wanted someone to, to that had some expertise in um, cybersecurity, specifically when tied to the grid, to say, is this a reasonable scenario? And part of Canada, right. some 50 and my million was, people. Yes. That one lasted up to four days in some areas. And then you typed LS. <laughs> yep, our next exactly. Electric failure. All right, well, you guys can kill that like video. That he stroke command. away. I mean, yeah, we probably shouldn't. Re Oh, wait. Hey, there I am again. See, I haven't even seen this yet. <laughs> Larry's like, oh, wait, who's that handsome man? Yeah. Yeah, you're very nice. Hey, yeah, well, yeah, we'll probably get flagged for some kind of copyright violation for playing that in the, during oh, the show, oh. but that's okay. Yeah. Is, uh, Fair use. I like the, I like the uh, power meter that's right there over your shoulder. That's, that's pretty funny. Yeah, that's pretty good. Nice job, Larry. I'm nice. going to have to go back and watch nice the whole show, thing. Man. You know what? I have to, too, because I haven't yeah. seen it yet. We've got to make sure we download it and preserve it for prosperity. So I mean, yes. you, you you really look halfway respectable. I, mean, I know. It's kind of crazy. Pretty pretty cool. Kind of crazy. <laughs> um, so speaking of privacy, interviewing uh, Michael, uh, boasting about your binges on Facebook could hurt your credit score. Interesting. Isn't that interesting? Is that that right? Credit scoring I mean, I mean, companies we, I, are now. I, I know we used to talk about <coughs> that, you know, affecting possible jobs for college students. Yeah. And... Absolutely. But how many, how many times has the word "wasted" showed up in your social media posts? So, uh, yeah, they're... probably more like I wasted all afternoon installing yeah. this fucking software. <laughs> <laughs> I wasted my time typing "ls" for CBS News. <laughs> <laughs> I almost went to hackertyper.com. Uh, yes, I yeah. almost did. I almost did. Did he type PWD before he typed LS? <laughs> I don't no. know. I couldn't see that that well. I did see the LS, though. It was awesome. Yep. Because it was like LS. Oh, oh, oh wait. <coughs> return, return, return. Control L. Control L. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I don't know. Privacy is dead. All right, next story. Larry, what do you have for stories? Did you put stories yeah, in there? Yeah, I did. I actually yeah, put a couple so in there. Said you had a couple. Um, oh, yeah. Larry, you're so good. Save That's the it. show, Larry. Save the yeah. show. So <laughs> My it, stories it, are lame. It, it, it's a little late. Well, this one was kind of lame, too, but it was good. It was humorous. Let's put it that way. Um, from the uh, Core Security blog um, on uh, the scary Halloween pen test findings. Yeah. Um, it was the five pen test finding that, you should, uh, that should scare the you-know-what out of you. So, uh, number one, passwords and other sensitive material lying around in plain text. See that. Two, unpatched machines with vulnerabilities that are too old, and we're talking corpse-like, like MS-08067. Love that. Mm -hmm. Saw that recently. <laughs> the best, however, was a print server with several 25-year-old unpatched vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities that were old enough to rent a car. <laughs> okay. Hidden passages aren't just for creepy settings in horror films. Um, like the uh, lo network port in the lobby area that was helpfully wired up or the VoIP phone in the reception area that never had the data port disabled. Yep, okay. seen that. Zombie printers. <coughs> mm -hmm. No Zombie one thinks printers. to update the printers, firmware and printers or apply ACLs. That's why bad guys like using these living dead machines to establish hidden bridge heads into your network. Uh -huh. And then number five, Tor exit nodes. I, well, I <laughs> had my experience with, <laughs> with Tor exit nodes. <coughs> That's why I like that one. Yeah, it was like the largest. I've never, I had never seen a system take up so much bandwidth <laughs> in my entire life, dude. Oh we had yeah, plenty of it, and somehow Tor was like new at the time. Yeah, oh, it and it. it somehow like bypassed the rate limiting filters and technology that they had on the the internet mm -hmm. and all of a sudden the internet was down and they were like oh they're hosting a tour server and we're like well you need to like turn that off or something and they're like no it's for research we're not turning it off 
hey, and it was Paul, completely you... unmoderated uh, Twitter, uh, Twitter right. exit node. Right, and they had oh. every port available outbound. Yes. So normally, you, uh-huh. when you stand sure. up your Tor exit node, you say, "Hey, I want you to allow. I want you to do port eighty outbound." Right. No, they had every open port. Yep. Paul, <laughs> <awesome. laughs> oh, did you ever see a Tor exit node in your university days? Yeah, that was in my university days when I was. That's yeah, the story uh, exactly. Was, yeah. yeah, okay. I thought you were talking about that because I. Yeah. I had the same challenge. Right, <laughs> and that was back in the day when they <laughs> when looking at the traffic from your Tor exit node was considered research. Mm-hmm. Now it's called going to jail. Right. Because mm-hmm. all the stuff that ends up out of the Tor exit nodes, you probably don't want to sniff. You don't want to have any knowledge right. of because you know kitty porn, and then you have kitty porn. Oh then, yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah. unfortunate. For a lot Good of reasons. Good on the privacy side, bad for everything else. <laughs> yep. Um, so uh, stuff that I haven't – that Bob saw on a pen test, speaking of printers, uh, there are certain models of HP printers that are scanners, copy faxes. Uh-huh. And there's one that if you leave uh, the paper, whatever's left in the printer, you can access remotely and say scan whatever's on the printer – uh, or, you know, printer, mm-hmm. copy, mm-hmm. multifunction device. So scan whatever's there o- over the web interface, and it'll spit back uh, a mm-hmm. JPEG image mm-hmm. or GIF image of... Is it GIF or GIF? GIF. GIF. GIF, GIF. No, it's GIF. I go with GIF. Is it SATA or SADA? SATA. SATA, because it's serial ATA. A-T-A. SATA. It's, it's technically GIF. Is it tomato? But I is, call it GIF. GIF. Is it tomato it. or tomato? tomato? And I think it was tomato, really. You, that sounds ridiculous. It's yes. tomato, dude. It's no, it's tomato. It's a, all right. Well, <laughs> we all agreed it's Sada. I think I said Sada earlier, and Chris corrected me. Sada. Yeah. No. So what Sada. were we talking about? Oh, so printer. It, the, the, and it gives you an image of whatever's on the printer at the time. Yep. And uh, if you do a Google dork for that particular model printer, I haven't done it in a while, but it'll. You can see whatever's on people's printer. I gotta okay, go back. So, and, so I gotta go Paul, back and wait a minute. Go ahead. Wait a minute. What is what is this HP company you speak of? It, no, it's it's Hewlett, Hewlett it's, Packard. It's, D, it's DY. H. Huh? Huh? Uh. What? I think that you, you they're got, no longer in existence. You, got, you guys don't have a DY computer. HP is no longer in existence. When did this happen? No. Why didn't someone tell me? No, no, no. Come on. You guys don't have a DY computer? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously. End of Could, HP. Really? Was I dreaming? Was I yes. Dreaming? I think you were, you were reading The Onion. <coughs> was yeah, it's, it's, all, it's a DY onion. computer because you put the HP logo on it, you close it, and it's upside down. When it's you close upside down. It, it's so a you DY have a DY computer. computer. Yeah. And I quote, H- HP ends its era. Bye-bye, HP. It's the end of an era. Fuck After 76 years, the tech giant will split into two companies on Sunday. Sunday being the end of October. So okay, we've been out of the game too long. Yeah. What are the two companies are splitting into? Um, HPE well, and something else? Yeah. They should totally call the other one DY. I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading. I'm reading. Um, they're splitting the companies. Um, I, I don't know what the result is. Well, the company formerly known as HP has the printer where you can get a GIF or GIF, whatever you prefer. Yeah, GIF. And it's like 21 bazillion gigawatts of power. Uh, wait, October was uh, Back to the Future. October 21st, I think it was. October 15th, I thought it was. No, oh, was, shit. Was okay. it 21st or 15th? What was nah, it? you're probably right. Paul, you're probably right. Yeah, it was October 15th. It was October 15th. You're younger and much spryer than I am. Yep. Yeah, not that much, Joff, because obviously I remember watching Back to the Future and thinking, <laughs> wow, that's a really long time in the future, and now here mm-hmm. we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 21 bazillion gigawatts or whatever, but um, <sighs> it was a funny reference, and October 2015 was the future date, and here we are. So. And here we are. Yep. Who so, would have thought? So, so speaking of the future... Um, um, blog over uh, Rata Security, Robert Graham had a pretty humorous post, I thought. Was it his Linus Torvalds post? No, no. It was OMG, the machines are breeding. No, I didn't read that doomed. One. Um, He posted it uh, last Wednesday. Um, but it was basically along the lines of some analysis that his uh, uh, Tesla automobile has yeah. the same Mac prefix, uh, Mac vendor code as his uh, Parrot AR drone. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, love it. It's awesome. 
Um, the it's, best. Wait, wait, what's it, really and, awesome. And, and is, of course, as I'm saying it, Rob Graham just posted Twitter and it comes up a little side and it says, uh, Linux is, um, oh crap. Linux, Linux is, is all crap. crap. <laughs> no. Uh, it's called GNU Linux. The security problems are in the GNU part. <laughs> well, you know what's really, yeah. what's really awesome? Yeah, and Linus <laughs> might like to think that, but yeah. we all is know that, that's not true. That his Tesla, is that his Tesla has a Mac address prefix. That's what's really awesome for me. It's mm. like his car has an address on the worldwide network. Not a layer three address, a layer two address for those people who don't know. So uh, there was this article about uh, mature and unconfident, the best information security teams ever. And he talks about mature and confident, mature and unconfident, uh, immature and unconfident, and all these different models. Um, but I think there's something to be said for mature and unconfident, right? I because agree. As I we absolutely. go on, we realize that there is no hope for a lot of things, and we have no confidence that... Anything will be as secure as we truly want it to be, and it's really all it's really all a best effort. When well, it comes I, right I'd down ra- to I'd it, I'd rather modify that, Paul. I'd rather say mature and not cocky, yeah. because <laughs> that is really where it's at. Mature and humble would be another way to say it. Yeah, uh, because anybody who thinks they've got it all nailed are going to be the next ones that are pwned. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, good article there. What else you got, Larry? Uh, let's see. Um, oh, the one uh, entitled "Undercover Damn, Cop." Damn, I wish Carlos was here. Oh, he shit! You Carlos, Carlos isn't here. I know he's Where not here. Where is Carlos when Carlos you need is, it? Carlos is off doing fun things. Hola, Carlos Perez. And he <clears> just posted <throat> an article oh, on the second, entitled "Are We Measuring Blue and Red?" Oh, teams? I saw that. Right. I didn't read it. <laughs> Sorry, college. I haven't read it yet. Yep. Uh, and I only read a little bit of it. I'm like, oh, wow. This should be something that people need to go read and think about. Palos has this habit of posting thoughtful things. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Like, how are we judging good red and blue team metrics on our internal teams? And um, are we, doing, are, are it we right? doing it properly? Yeah. How do we how do we measure the success of our internal red teams and blue teams? And blue teams and blue teams. And what do we do? How are we measuring now? And are they the right measurements? Are they the right, right. stick? Um, are they the right yardstick to be using? And well, because as we talked about in the previous article, you don't want your blue team to be too cocky and be like, "Oh right. yeah, we're doing the security thing right. Security's great. Yay for mm-hmm. us." And yeah. <laughs> the internet is a lovely and peaceful place. Mm-hmm. You don't ever want to hear that. It's the same. It's the same reason you don't ever want to hear your sysadmin say. Oops. <laughs> or say, hey, everything's secure now. I'm going home. No. <laughs> no. No. It's a constant battle. Mm-hmm. It's a constant battle. It's a process. Hey, process. I oh, know. Is that a process? Yeah. So he oh, gives it's a, a process or process? It's a process. Is I don't know. Is it a tomato router? or tomato? People in Europe call routers routers. Yep. And then you got to wear your toque when you go out outside. <laughs> Josh Wright, I'll get that joke. Is it an inside Sans instructor joke? No, no. Uh, I guess uh, Tim Medine and um, Josh Ray were back and forth. One of their interns said that Josh, I think it's the way I read it is that Josh broke some code by uh, declaring a variable and then not referencing the variable correctly throughout the code. Mm-hmm. Declared the variable is outside with two O's, O O. You, oh, you side. And the intern came back and asked Josh if he was Canadian. <laughs> uh, we love great. the Canadians, though. We so, really speaking do. of uh, Canadians, um, we should call look this at, at, Canadian uh, variable names. Look at, <laughs> <laughs> that should that totally be a, be a category in Hacker Jeopardy. I mean, I'll take Canadian, Canadian variable, variable names. Canadian variable for names. <laughs> 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 So, oh wow! So, how would you define an OODA loop in Canada? <laughs> <laughs> an OODA loop, OODA, OODA egg? Mm. Got about four O's in it. <laughs> it's like the three kind. You know, no, the, don't the, tell the yes, Canadian encryption joke. joke. No, Joff, have you heard the Canadian oh, encryption no, joke? No, I'm banning the Canadian, the Canadian encryption joke from the show. It's banned. <laughs> We've told it too many times in the look, past look, ten years. Officially on the record, I love the Canadians. Like us Australians, <laughs> and I'll put myself in the Australian bucket for today. Mm-hmm. We are Commonwealth compatriots, compatriots. And, and the Canadians, they have the best encryption. 
<sighs> and I have the best encryption. Whatever, Larry said. Hey, that's I, that's all I said. I didn't say the joke. I didn't say the joke, okay? <laughs> Larry can tell the joke if he wants. No, I can't. God save the queen. She ain't no human being. Anyway. <laughs> did you did you see speaking of jokes what Apollo sent me on Twitter? Yes. Yeah. Roman walks, walks into, into a, a bar, bar and says, I'll have five beers. He holds up two fingers. <laughs> I'll, I'll have, have five, five beers. beers. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's yeah really that's not, a good it's really not that funny. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it's pretty it's funny. funny if you have had, had, it's funny after you've had two <laughs> beers. You've had, <laughs> <laughs> you've had a Roman two beers. <laughs> Roman two beers. So. Wait, so if he walked uh, into a bar and held up his hand, would that mean he had Roman hands? Yes. Ooh. Oh, oh, you oh, want to see they Roman. Oh. Yeah, I don't want to know whether he's going to go first or second at Ask Grabby Grabby. <clears throat> All right, anything oh, else? Yes, I think we're good. I think we're good, too. I think, I, I think we're good. We'll be back next week. Yep. If you dare to watch us next week. <laughs> <laughs> we, ha- we have enjoyed it. I hope you stayed with us for the last hour <clears throat> because I just hope you stayed with us for the last yeah. hour. <laughs> We really, we yeah. hadn't done security news in a while. Did we no, do security news in the ten year? I don't uh, think I don't we did. No, we, no didn't. we didn't do security news. So we're a little, we got out a little out of the rhythm. So we did. I, I have to say that. And, the, and Paul, you know what? The, the news this the news this week sucked, sucked, dude. Oh my god, did it? Like I said, breach because of SQL injection in WordPress. It, and it, you know, it didn't help that I didn't get a lot of time because I was on vacation last week and I was playing catch up at work and. <sighs> What is that Michael Pizzell's interview was awesome, though, it by was. the way. That was, was the shining, yeah, yeah. The shining Mike, moment. Mike was, was a lot of fun. I, I hope we get to speak Not just him. the tech advisor for Mr. Robot, which gets me really excited, but the uh, OS Int stuff that he had oh my was gosh. awesome. Awesome. And just the little nuggets that he shared, like for those that don't do uh, OS Int very often. Right. Like, holy crap, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. Yeah, and it's totally... Like a lot of us that have been doing pen testing for a while, we have like the foundation. So yep. to like hear his tips, it's like, oh my god! And then for people getting into it, you go read his site. You can quickly build up a foundation, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and then hearing some of his tips. And I totally want to read his book now. Yep, I think I have an older version. Like I think I may have like version one or two of his book. He's yeah. got four out now, I think. So I need to pick up that the new was one. it was it was very good. It was yeah, very absolutely. You know, uh, but yeah, you're right. The security news sucked this week, but. Uh, you know, and then we, I, I'd like to bring back some more Hacker Jeopardy, actually. We probably should do that yeah. as a. The problem with that is event. someone has to create it that's not playing. And yeah, that's it the takes issue. a really long time to create. Yeah. So I changed it for my other show, for Stogie Geeks, mm-hmm. and we don't do uh, Jeopardy. And I just come up with the questions and multiple choice answers, and then I ask our guests and hosts, and then I score it. So I have a spreadsheet that just automatically mm-hmm, scores it. Mm-hmm. That was a, a lot easier, uh, I think, than doing the whole Hacker Jeopardy thing. Yep. And, and, and that, that, I, can be, that can be fun, too. That yep, can be and fun, I, too. And quite honestly, I think when we did Hacker Jeopardy, we were very... Not, we not, were we, wasted. We, we were wasted, but we were also very acrimonious about it. We were very, oh no, you got it. That's totally cool. No, yeah, you yeah. you got the buzzer first, and yeah, we were, we were right. very. Well, we, we don't have buzzers. That's the other. I mean, we could have yeah. buzzers, right? But the buzzers we need would just buzzers. Be, just, That's what we need buzzers. But see, but, over Skype though, the buzzer would be a tough thing to do because it has to yeah, be. Yeah, but we don't do about it. that. That's an excuse to all of us to go in the studio, right? Forget about the yeah. Skype. But now, that that said, I think we were very fair about it. And I think, yeah, I think that one. We could do another really one. Well. We just yeah. yelled like we did. Yeah, it, it was kind of fun being inebriated and yelling about Hacker Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it's fun and to be inebriated. I mean, the moment when Joff and I screamed "finger" at the top of our lungs in unison—that <laughs> <laughs> was one of those magical <laughs> moments. How does it get any better than that? <laughs> and then we just burst into laughter. <laughs> wow, I must have been really drunk. I don't remember you guys yelling "finger" together. <laughs> Because that's funny. <laughs> we did. It was we did. Go is, back and watch the video. Last. <laughs> that shit's funny. Yeah. Well, and we miss and we miss Allison, and it was great to have Allison back on the yes, show. Yes, it was. That it was. day, and I uh, hope she comes back to see this again because you know we're a bunch of dudes, and <laughs> it's great to have Allison on the show. <laughs> it's nice to have the female perspective, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that concludes our show for this evening. Yes. <clears throat> Thanks everyone for watching. We'll see everyone next week. Larry, take us out. Over. And we're throwing baseballs. Help. Help.